really easy to work with. They've really helped us to come up with the solutions that we need. Huawei's professional network planning service enables the wireless network to provide full coverage and high density access. And the free mobility solution provides convenient network access control methods. The wired and wireless convergence technology drastically simplifies network device management. Huawei's solution not only helped the campus on the IT management level, but also elevated the learning and teaching experience for students and faculty. Having the internet in a lecture space and particularly available to all students all the time is uh, like a game changer. Well, it's enhanced the way that students see themselves as being part of the lecture. So we used to have to only be able to use the wireless network in the library, but now we can use it anywhere across campus, which is fantastic. So now we have the ability to download all of our lectures and recordings from um, Learn, which is where all the student information is stored, and that's way easier with the new Wi-Fi. So with SVF, we're finding it much easier to deploy our switches and to manage them. It makes it a very quick and simple process. By having this solution, we can identify new users and allow them to self-enroll on our network and give them access to resources that are required while protecting our key information assets. We're having a big push at Lincoln over the next couple of years to get a blended delivery format. That's face-to-face, -face, that's IT, that's bringing in all the types of resources that we can from around the world using technology that Huawei is providing for us. It's exactly what we need to do to ensure the most modern, up-to-date delivery methods. With Huawei's help, Lincoln University now has one of the most efficient and reliable network solutions in New Zealand. And now more than ever, Lincoln is better equipped to fulfill their mission, creating a more sustainable future for our planet. Our university is a leading university for science and technology in Thailand. So we want an advanced technology to be prototyped for the whole country of Thailand to study. We want to implement our students to study in smart classroom. And you can image that 50 students access the server. They need the high speed. So we are working with Huawei. And we can the Huawei have a great solution for us. We increase the speed from 1 gigabit Ethernet to 40 gigabit Ethernet to every building in our campus network. Good morning or good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is AJ Gupta. I'm the senior consultant in the Huawei Datacom network product line. On behalf of Huawei, I really welcome you all and really appreciate your time in attending this live webcast for launching some of the S-Series Cloud Engine switches that we're going to talk about. As you know, digital transformation really helps to boost productivity, increase efficiency, to bring new innovative service models, there is no surprise that every enterprise is racing towards digitization. In order to digitize, you have to embrace new technologies, mobility, big data, cloud computing. You have to accept new applications, AR, VR, immersive applications. There is no question in order to accept and embrace new these technologies and application, the network needs to be different. The traditional network is not going to be what's needed for digital transformation. So today in this live webcast, we're going to really provide you the building blocks that will help you to be ready for the digital business for the next five to ten years, actually. The whole webcast we have split into three parts. The very first part, we are very fortunate to have Kitty Fox, president of the IDC China, to share her views on digital transformation globally. In the second part, Mike Ma is going to come. He's the, he's the vice president of the enterprise networking, and he's going to talk and discuss some of the new products and solutions that we are launching. 
and also wait. He's also going to help us in, in, in one of the demos on some of the tools that are being launched as well. And I've seen that demo, so it's really interesting, really impressive. So I really encourage you to really watch that demo and see how some of these management tools can help you increase the operational efficiency. And lastly, but not the least, we have an interesting panel discussion. We have assembled a good array of panelists for you. And we're going to discuss about the digital transformation and the next generation networks from an industry and verticals point of view. So in the meantime, let me also tell you there is a live Q&A session, Q&A dialogue on your web, which you can type your questions. And our panel of experts are standing by to answer those questions. So without any further ado, let's get started. Let me first invite Kitty Fox, president of IDC China, to share her views on how digital transformation is changing the world. Kitty? Thank you, AJ. Welcome, Kitty. So we really like to understand how, what's going on in this industry, what's going on in the market, how digital transformation is changing our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. Sure, I will definitely try my best to explain all the details. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Just about 10 years ago, we start to look at how cloud computing, big data, mobility, as well as social business. It was the bond of the third platform. Sometimes I'm actually really amazed that we are already in the second chapter in the third platform era. We are looking at the multiplied innovations, everything in scale. We look at all the new innovation technologies such as artificial intelligence, IoT, um, blockchains, how it's changed everybody's life. And very soon, we will move to the third chapter, which is about hyper complexities. It's about automations. Now, when we start to talk about digital transformation, some of the people are asking, is digital transformation becoming old? Well, let's, let's, let's first look at how the search keyword digital transformation from Google. As you can see in this chart, it is still continues to increase in terms of the number of people typing the keyword digital transformation. From IDC, we actually look at the digital transformation stand spending from 2018 to 2022 on the average growth, at least 16% growth. It is more than double of the global GDP growth at this moment. And in fact, we are expecting by 2020, 55% of organization will be digitally determined. They will have integrated digital strategies, a single roadmap, and an integrated enterprise-wise te technologies architecture. So I think by now, no one really questions about whether digital transformation is old. Now, in order to really become the digital determined determine organization, we really need to look at some of the challenges that we are facing today. IDC summarizes it is actually five key challenges. That include the outdated KPI, siloed digital transformation initiative as a result of digital, as a result of traditional silo organization structure. Short-term business focus with tactic plans, limited digital transformation skill and expert, as well as silo of innovation. Now, in order to be very success, we need to bench, benchmark ourselves. So the gold standard, the new gold standard we are looking for is the future enterprise. What is future enterprise? Everything in scale. When I talk about scale, I can give you some example. IDC actually predicted in the next five years, at least 500 million new applications will be developed. It is more than the last 40 years. 
This is the scale we are talking about. Now, to become the future enterprise, we are looking at the futures of customers. It is not just about providing good customer satisfaction. It is really to understand what your customer is looking for, for empathy in scale, future of intelligence. With all the data that we have, what is the true insight that you understand about your customers? What are the products and services that they are looking for? The insight at scale. And also, we are looking at future of operations, resilience at scale, and also, last but not least, futures of work. What are we looking at for the new working model? How can we work together with artificial intelligence, robots, and all the new technologies that we can actually provide a scale of productivity? With this, what we really need to do is, first of all, to build a digital platform. A digital platform that with data and artificial intelligence as the core. We can really leverage not only the internal data, but as well as the external data. A robust network that can provide a timely analytics and also push all the results to the edge. This is the new digital platform that we should focus and build up. IDC also predict that 60% of institutions will deploy digital platform strategies worldwide by 2020. Because of that, we are actually facing three key networking challenges. First, low latency. One milliseconds legacy requirement in legacy critical digital transformation application. Large scale. Imagine by 2020, 63 million of devices will be connected to the network at the same time in every second. Complicity. Because of the complicity of the network, we are going to spend three times more of the cost for the maintenance and operation than the investment of network equipment. So what we are really looking for is a system and a network that can be self-learning, intelligence, and automation that can ensure to provide the digital, uh, digital experience for our customers, agile DevOps environments and infrastructure, as well as the compatibility for the legacy system that we have. Now, let's look at the key trend for the future network developments. We are looking at three major trends in the future. Number one, network is increasingly important for business. When people think about digital transformation, it is about change of business strategies. All the infrastructure and technology is a major tool to make sure that we can provide the business strategies. Network is just like the blood in our body. As long as we have a good blood circulation, our whole body can function very well. When we think about digital transformation, the network system should be the first that we really need to structure and put in place as the first strategist. Second, accelerated penetration of machine learning and artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence drive a self-configurating and self-healing infrastructure that increase productivity and eliminates manual process. Autonomous infrastructure will expand into area that will eventually become automatic driven network and continuous feedback loops from machine learning, artificial intelligence to intense leading to internet intelligent networks that can automatically provide self-healing and proactive network security detection and execution. Machine learning and artificial intelligence will significantly reduce operating cost improve 
overall IT effectiveness, provide less downtime, greater availabilities and flexibilities. Third, intent-based network. That include the policy, automation, visibility, and verifications. Imagine the network actually understand about our business intentions and they can actually automatically change and optimize the network. In 2021, IDC predict that 60% of IT infrastructure deployments of new enterprises will be enabled by intent-based network. From 2019 to 2021, intent-based network will be it will be the mainstream and almost all vendors will integrate this capability into their products. To really summarize about the future network, what we are really looking for is the ubiquitous network access. An infrastructure that seamlessly connect everything and provide ultra low latency quality. Smart network operations, a unified and intelligent network management system with simple GUI, take care of everything. Open architecture, open architecture and a flexible business model protect customers' long-term investment with less vendor lock. That's actually summarized what I would like to share with you today, and thank you. Thank you, Kitty, for such an in insightful presentation. Uh, it's very clear that digital transformation is disrupting every industry, every vertical. You talked about digitally deterministic enterprises. Uh, I'm sure they have network challenges, actually. Network doesn't only need to provide, I would say, a user experience, a better user experience, but has to be much more nimble much more agile, actually. Would you agree with that? Is that a fair statement? Ajay, I totally agree about this. And in fact, when you really look at the uh, network in the future, as I mentioned earlier, it is just like your blood circulation. If you really want to have like full function of your body, you need a very good uh, blood circulation. And that's really what we are looking for for network in the future. Thank you, Kitty. Thanks for a great presentation. Thank you. All right, now we're going to start with the second part of the webcast. You heard Kitty talking about the landscape in the market in the industry. We really wanted to show you what it takes to build the next generation networks. At this point, I would love to invite Mike, the vice president of the enterprise networking, to really talk about the solution and the products that we are launching today and how it helps to create a digital business for the next five to 10 years. Mike. Thank you, Mike, for coming. We would like to love to understand in terms of some of the new products and solutions that you're launching, you're gonna talk and discuss today, how they can help on the digital transformation for various enterprises. Okay, AJ. Uh, first of all, I'm grateful to Kitty uh, for sketching a blueprint for future companies' digitalization. Um, I'm very excited. I think uh, online CTOs and IT managers are as same as me. I think we are in the midst of new technologies, and also we are in the year of rapid change. So today, our CTO, CIOs, and IT managers need to rethink whether our campus network can meet the company's future business request. Great, take it away, Mike. Okay, next I will introduce Huawei brand new cloud campus solution and uh, cloud engine S series for Wi-Fi 6 year. Next, I will introduce to you Huawei's brand new cloud engine S series switches and cloud campus solution for the Wi-Fi 6 era. In 2013, the 8th of August, Huawei published industry's first campus switch, S12700. That switch was based on agile architecture. It's not only a node for data forwarding, but also a node for network device management and user policy management. 
S12700 adopted industry's first SVF technology, super virtual fabric, that can virtualize aggregation and access switches into the line cards or ports of core switches. That simplifies the device management workload. And S12700 was the first to support free mobility with a technology that's able to decouple user policy management and user IP address and location. That simplifies the configuration and management of user policies and grants consistent experience to users. S12700 also made three breakthroughs in terms of architecture. First, it's the first to introduce distributed architecture. Second, it converged wired and wireless network management. The wired and wireless access are managed together so that we can fill the gap between them. And the third breakthrough is agility and programmability. S12700 is built on top of the Huawei in-house developed EMP chipset. Compared with traditional switches, when there is a new business, new demand, we only need to upgrade the software to cope with such new demand, and that protects user and customers' investments. With continuous investment in R&D, including hardware and software, and architecture, Huawei has gained significant growth in the market. Starting from 2016, Huawei has been ranking top two in terms of market share in the world, and Huawei has been ranked top one brand in the Chinese market since 2015. I would like to thank all of our customers around the world for your trust and your support, and we are confident that with our continuous investment in R&D, we will be able to present to you competitive solutions and products. Now we see many new developments in the market. Wireless cloud and intelligence. BYOD and IoT applications present challenges in terms of wireless network. According to Gartner, 80% of IoT projects will require wireless connectivity by 2020. The second trend, cloud. Now there is the emergence of cloud UC, online video, online conferencing cloud-based VR education and AR medical care. These services are getting more and more popular, presenting challenges to enterprises. The third trend is caused by the complexity of the network and protocols. If we still rely on command lines and traditional NMS systems to manage the network, we will not be able to cope. And therefore, we have the need to adopt intelligence. According to Gartner, by 2020, only 40% of the network will be maintained and operated using command lines. And that figure in 2018 is 75%. So now, we're moving to wireless, to cloud, and to intelligence. What challenges do these trends bring to us? I would like to explain the challenges in three figures. First, zero. Zero packet loss. For IoT and production network, all the devices need to be always on, whether the device is moving or not. And that is very challenging to the network's reliability and bandwidth. Second figure is 50 plus Mbps. For cloud, VR, AR, and UC services, they require at least 50 Mbps access rate. That's very challenging for network bandwidth and capacity. The third figure is minutes. When there is a fault or a threat in the network, we need to respond to it within minutes. So now we see the trends and the challenges in campus network. How do we build a network for the future? Or the network for the future, what characteristics should they have? Traditional network was about connections and bandwidth. It was centered around data forwarding. And for that network, access was a priority. But such a network cannot cope with 
the demand and the requirement for user experience in the future. In the future, the network should be about user and applications and their experience. We need to pay attention to users and user behaviors, and we need to leverage AI and big data technologies to provide automated deployment and intelligent OM capabilities and secure the network. Therefore, future network should have three features, ultra-broadband, intelligent, and open. And these are the highlights in Huawei's cloud campus solution. First, ultra-broadband. This is the foundation for providing high-quality service in campus network. Now, in campus network, we see three-layer architecture, access, aggregation, and core, and each layer converges user traffic. So when we have massive amounts of user or devices connected to the network, there is a huge traffic in aggregation and core. And with the development of cloud, north-south traffic surges. And aggregation and core will become the bottleneck of the campus network. And core nodes will be the benchmark of the quality of the network. Therefore, we urgently need to upgrade campus network. With the deployment of Wi-Fi 6 and IoT and office applications, 10G access, 40G aggregation and 100G core will be a standard practice for the mid to long term network construction. That is also why Huawei is rolling out the brand new cloud engine S-series switches. And next, I would like to present to you Huawei's Cloud Engine S-Series switches portfolio. This one is Huawei's 5731S. This is used for access of large campuses. It can provide GE access. It has rich port configurations to cope with diverse business needs. And this one is 6730H. This is a 10GE switch used for mid to small size campus core or large campus aggregation. It is able of providing six 100G uplink and 24 or 48 10G downlink. And now the star of the show S12700 E series. We have three models, dash E, dash 8, and dash 12. They will be the ones we use to build the ideal core nodes of the future campus network. S5 31S, 6730-H, and 12700E are all based on Agile architecture. So naturally, they have the support for SVF, free mobility, and native AC, and many other cloud campus features. 12700E is the most powerful campus switch. There are three highlights. First, super fast forwarding. The whole switch has a switching capacity of 57.6 TBPS, the highest in the industry. It is sufficient for the demand in the next 5 to 10 years. When there is increasing demand, customer only needs to upgrade the LPU or, MP, the, or SFU without changing the chases. And this switch has converged wired and wireless access management. One 12700E can support 10K AP access and 50K concurrent online users. And the third highlight is smooth evolution. S5731 and 6730 and 12700 
E are all based on Huawei solar chipset. In the future, when there is new protocol, new service requirements, customer only needs to do a software upgrade, get the latest software, and they will be able to support all of them. 12700E has very high switching performance. It has 12 service slots. Each slot capacity is 4.8 TBPS. The total capacity is six times of other counterpart switches. It is capable of handling the evolution of the network for the next decade. And 12700E has adopted very advanced architecture design. The first one is distributed switching. The MPU and switching fabric are separated. There are several benefits from that architecture design. First, in terms of control plane, since MPU and switching fabric are separated, plus CSS2 hardware stacking technology of Huawei, in the whole system we can support 1 plus 3 MPU backup, and that can significantly improve the network reliability. So even when 3 MPUs are down, the whole system can function normally. And the second benefit from separating MPU and fabric is, compared with the traditional 2-in-1 solution, MPU and fabric in one, when one MPU is down, the whole switching capacity is lost by half. But since we have separated them, when MPU is down, the switching fabric still functions. So it is a better fit for large-scale campus network. And S12700E-8 and-12 supports four switching fabrics online, and each of them supports 4.8 TBPS. Therefore, they have 3 plus 1 protection. And I would like to introduce another highlight in our architecture design. We have adopted NGFS cell switching in the campus switch. And this technology enables us to detect the load in the network dynamically and select the optimum path for the packets. That way we can avoid network congestion and packet loss caused by the traditional hashing algorithms. And therefore, we can really have non-blocking services with zero packet loss. With Huawei Wi-Fi 6 products and cloud engine series switches, we have been able to build an ultra-fast speed network. But then we need to deploy it and maintain it. Huawei Cloud Campus Solutions' second highlight, intelligence, will come into play. Compa compared with traditional network, now the network is so much more complicated. We cannot rely on command lines and traditional NMS. And therefore, Huawei has presented the one-stop management center with three components. Agile controller, Campus Insight, which is an analyzer system for the network, and CIS, the security system. These three subsystems combined can enable 100% automated deployment of the network, minute-level fault location, and 99% of the threats identified in the network. Next, let's look at the network automation. Now, 80% of the configuration is done through command lines. It's time-consuming and resource-consuming. Now, the enterprises have the demand for fast rollout of services. With Agile Controller, from network planning, design, deployment, policy, configuration, and so on, they can all be done on the GUI platform. We can respond and roll out services very quickly. I can give you an example. We have a customer who has deployed Huawei Cloud Campus solution. And this company has one HQ with 2,000 users and 80 branches with 200 users on average each. And the deployment time they experienced was cut by 60% significantly higher efficiency in network deployment. Once the network is planned and deployed, 
we will face a very big challenge. O&M, CIOs and IT managers experience this headache for a long time. Traditionally, there are three problems in O&M. First, it takes too long to locate a fault. When a fault happens, network engineer usually spends hours to look at access aggregation and core layers and looking at each um, layers. They spend a lot of time trying to find the fault, but at the same time, the service is impacted. And the other, the other problem is that the faults usually only occur for a short period of time. When you detect it, it probably has already passed. To reproduce it, it takes a long time. And if you wait for the next time it happens, you have a long time of impact to the services. Traditional NMS only collects data every five minutes. That's not sufficient. And the third problem is passive response. Now the systems are all responding to network faults passively. They only take actions after it happens, and that's not able to cope with the new demand. With AI, big data, machine learning algorithms, we have rolled out Campus Insights analysis system. With this system, we're able to locate faults quickly, and with telemetry, when an, a, a fault happens, we have the data we need to, ana to analyze it. And with big data, we're able to have a bigger picture of the whole network and a better analysis of the network. We're able to build a database based on past experience so we can do predictive maintenance instead of only responding to it after it occurs. Apart from ultra broadband and intelligence, a healthy and sustainable network has to be open. Huawei has established 26 joint verification labs around the world. We collaborate with our partners and customers in the enterprise market and in government markets collaboratively, and we verify the solutions. We have already pre-integrated 30-plus partner applications, successfully achieved interoperability with 40-plus mainstream NMS systems. In terms of solution design, devices design, and interfaces design, we have the capability to interoperate with mainstream third-party providers. And therefore, we can contribute to a high-quality sustainable network for our customers' benefits. And lastly, I would like to summarize the highlights of Huawei Cloud Campus solution. First, based on Huawei Wi-Fi 6 and IoT converged access, we're able to build massive throughputs and smart connectivity of everything for the network. Second highlight is that we have the one-stop management center as our controller, Campus Insight and CIS. We are able to achieve automated deployment, intelligent ONM, and the security of the network. And the third one is openness and programmability. Huawei's Cloud Campus solution, in terms of solution, devices, and interfaces, they're all open. We can work with third parties to build high-quality, future-oriented, open network for our customers. Thank you. That's all of my introduction for Huawei Cloud Campus solution and products. If you are interested, please visit our website for more information. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. It's really good to see that Huawei has really brought some most powerful uh, industries campus switches. You also talked about the automation, some of the network management configuration provisioning tools. Um, I totally believe it's a network IT manager's dream if I can improve my efficiency by 20% using some of these tools. So I'd love to, if you can elaborate more on some of these tools and how the automation really works in the, in the, in the campus network. Okay, uh, I won't want to waste time. Uh, I will invite our chief solution architect, Mr. Liu Han, who will give us a demonstration of our products. Oh, beautiful, yeah. thank you. Mr. Liu Han has worked in campus network domain for 20 years, and he has a very rich experience in network design. Oh, Mr. Liu Han. Yeah. Hi, Mike. Oh, welcome, Hi. Mr. Han. Hi. Please. 
So today, I'd like to introduce our brand new one-stop management center and the advanced AI-powered operation and maintenance tools called Campus Insight. And then, let's see the demo. Yeah, let's see the demo. So you said one-stop management center. That sounds just too exciting right now. You know, single pane of glass, people have been talking for years and years. So let's see what, what can be shown here. Okay, so it can address all deployment, operation, and maintenance. And all the issues can be done in one platform. And furthermore, generally, in a large campus network. So you have to face many platforms, such as NMS, SD1 platform, independent authentication server, mm -hmm. or even the firewall management system. So if all this platform there has some issues or not, you have to check one by one manually. But now, okay, our new one uh, our new one stop management center can help us to do that is it can integrate all the functionalities, the system and mm -hmm. the platform in the one platform. And also it's able to complete all configurations, including LAN layer 2, LAN layer 3, 1, SD1, even the policies. Okay? And the second one is completely automated via young models. That, that sounds too good, actually. You know, in order to deploy a campus network, you have to configure policies on different devices, different platforms. Mm. So far, you have to deliver configuration one device at a time. So how does this help actually to do it in one shot? Okay, yes, I understand. Now, you don't have to do all of this platform things with the one-stop management center. You can complete all deployment configuration via GUI interface on, on one platform. Okay, so let me show you. Let's do it. Okay, so this is a web page, the first page, home page of management center, and you will find before deploying it, uh, there has different scenarios mm -hmm. we can choose. For example, we can choose we can choose the small or micro campus scenario or medium large campus scenario, even for the site interconnection. So let's see for the large campus. And in large campus scenario, it needs only four steps. Okay, uh, you can complete all underlay configurations for a large campus network. The entire proce uh, process may take no longer than 30 minutes. The firstly, it's we can do the site design. So site basic site information, you can also directly clone the configuration of an existing site. Oh, this is how we can deploy the large campus network for thousands of users at one time. That's, a, that's great, actually. So it's extremely practical and very easy to use. Yeah, Reducing absolutely. the complexity and operational management for different IT network managers. Yeah, absolutely. And the second part, the second step, device management. Mm -hmm. uh, register all devices to be managed. You can also import an Excel, Excel files with one click which contains device ESNs, device roles, device stacking informations, and other informations as well, okay? And the third step, then we go to the device configuration. All configuration of devices, including gateways, switches, even access points, firewalls, can be complete on the GUI, okay? After the devices are powered on, they will communicate with the platform to obtain the corresponding configurations. Finally, when we deploy all the configurations, okay, we should do the clarifications to check mm -hmm. the configuration is correct or not. So here shows the correlation of all the configurations. Okay. Very good. So how can I guarantee the one link experiences mm -hmm. actually for key services say, mm -hmm. uh, between two sites? You know, in most of the cases, the LAN and the WAN are managed separately on different platforms and their policies cannot be unified. So how does Campus Insights help us to do that? Uh, it's a good question, because now you can think about in a large enterprise, 
the compass must be a land and a one converged mm -hmm. scenario. Mm -hmm. So we go back to the main slide and click, click the, the site in the connection. Okay, click the site in the connection. Mm -hmm. Assume that we have con already completed all the previous steps. Let's go to step five. The step five is in the connection configurations. Mm -hmm. Okay, on this page, we can configure one site VPN config and uh, authenticate line site services, devices, at one or step. Okay. Really, really good. Mm. A real unified platform with the unified portal. Mm. I'm sure as the network is expanding in scale and the number of uh, personnel and the network complexity goes up, while the resources are not going up, this one-stop management center can really greatly help us improving the efficiency of the networks. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So, uh, actually, we have already launched Campus Insight. With Campus Insight, you don't have to worry about it. Okay? Campus Insight is not a traditional NMS. Mm -hmm. Campus Insight is an advanced AI-based operation and maintenance tools and ensure user and network in experience. Okay? Uh, the new site experience evaluation system of Campus Insight can evaluate the experience quality of network-wide site. It displays the overall experience quality of the entire network based on seven most of important network indicators. Mm -hmm. okay? And it drives proactive network optimization. So I think after the optimization, as you talked about, is complete, you can really compare the network help, what was there more than a month ago, and really find out how the optimization of the network has really happened. Mm -hmm. So that is absolutely great. Experiencing problems of audio, video applications in campuses are very, very difficult to solve. You know, where the problem is, which part of the network it lies actually, it's very difficult for the IT managers to, dis to find out, to determine uh, where the problem is caused, whether it's by the network or by the application, because the device indicators on the NMS may be normal. So I'm sure the, N uh, the campus insight is gonna come a great help uh, for the network managers. Oh yes, you are right. Campus inside can help you demarcate and locate audio and video application problems in real time. Okay, you can locate the 40 network nodes through visibility of network call paths and correlation analysis algorithm. Wow, that is simply just wow. Okay. Campus Insight has really turned out to be extremely powerful than at least I thought about it, and I'm sure our audience and our viewers are gonna share the same view. Now I have just one more question for you. Can Campus Insights do the predictive analysis? Yeah, absolutely. Predictive analysis for optical transceiver failures, as an example, okay, let me show you. It uses a big data and a linear regression or logistic regression algorithm to predict the optical transceivers that are about to fail. Okay, so that preventive measures can be taken in time. Yeah. We can measure all the parameters for the optical transceivers to determine if this trans uh, transceiver go to about to fail or not. Okay. Great, today you have really shown us some very, very useful functions of this one stop. Mm. Uh, I won't call it a management center, but this campus inside for the new predictive analysis purposes as well, the ONM intelligent tool actually. Uh, would you like to sum it up for, for mm. us and for the audience actually? Oh yeah, sure. So the summary is the first one, the one stop management center achieves unified management and end to end automation, lifetime, uh, automation and allows you to config LAN one security mm -hmm. and all the other configurations on one platform of the unified platform and the second one the intelligent operation tools 
campus inside is an AI powered advanced assistant. It helps you to gain insight into the entire network. So quickly locate issues and implement fault prediction. Great, thank you again. That's all for our demonstration. I really do appreciate the time, Han, to coming over and showing to our viewers and our audience how they can reduce the complexity and the operational maintenance on their day-to-day -day lives. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Adrian. Thank you. So as you have seen here, this automation AI-based tools in the network can really greatly help in reducing some of this complexity and bring the simplicity. The whole idea really is to gain the visibility into the network. You really cannot manage what you cannot see here. That's just the bottom line here. So in order really, I would really encourage you to look at the demos, check out some of these new tools and see for yourself how they can help you. Now we come to the most exciting part of the webcast, the panel discussion. For you, we have assembled an impressive group of people uh, to talk about digital transformation and how to draw linkages to the next generation network. So let's go meet our panelists here. Thanks guys, thanks everyone for coming. Really do appreciate your time. Uh, let's first start introducing ourselves. So we start with you. Uh, I'm uh, P.T. Ho, uh, Director of IT Services at the University of Hong Kong. Thank you. Uh, Wang Jiabao. Thank you. My name is Wang Jiabao. I'm from Huawei Corporate Quality Process and IT Management Department. I'm responsible for the planning, construction and operation of Huawei IT Network. My name is Mae. I'm Product Director of Huawei Campus Switch. I'm in charge of the R&D of Huawei Cloud Campus Switch. This is Kitty. I am the Managing Director of IDC China that we provide market intelligence as well as continuity service for enterprise to understand about the technology trend in the future. Thank you all. Thanks so much. Uh, we have talked a lot about the digital transformation. Uh, Mike talked about the next generation products and solutions that we are launching today. I think it'll be great to understand and drill down kind of a little bit more into the, in the vertical and specific industry. Maybe Dr. Ho, we can start with you. You come from the university. You have very good experience in the educational environment. How would you say the trends and challenges are in the university arena? Uh, thank you. Uh, we are in the digital era. Uh, in the last decade, we have seen so many innovations uh, making use of the new technology, say the uh, mobile uh, technologies, the cloud, the IT, deep learning, and so forth. And uh, with these kind of technologies, and uh, the many of the entrepreneurs and small ME has taken advantages of these in developing new business, uh, digital native, and also a very fast adoption and getting into uh, the uh, as a as a kind of a threat to many of the uh, big businesses. So in the enterprise, like the university. We have been uh, trying to also reap the benefit of the innovation uh, from the new technologies. But on the other hand, we are also uh, tied with the legacy systems and uh, all the uh, traditional uh, 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 people, the cultures and so forth. And it is not so easy to change quickly. So we need the digital transformation initiative so as to in, uh, uh, enable the different signals so that they can work together in order to make uh, the adoption of the technologies and uh, getting into the digital uh, uh, eras. For instance, in the university uh, uh, settings, uh, the teaching and learning, uh, we have to adopt the new pedagogies, making use of the network and also the VR, AR and so forth. And also we say in the estate management and so we would like to adopt all these uh, surveillance uh, by making use of the uh, 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 AI, the uh, uh, facial recognition and also we would like to make use of uh, IoT to uh, control all this environment and so forth. All this could not be done without a transformation of the organization and also the environment. So first of all, of course, we need to work on the organization and people, but at the same time, we need to have the technology driving force. Otherwise, 
people would want to do that, but then we do not have the environment. So the lead work is one of the area we need to do. It is not just the traditional way of uh, making the connection and fast and cap uh, uh, fast and a lot of capacity. Those are mandatory requirements. On the other hand, we need to have the designed uh, security so that the people will feel safe when they work on that, uh, in different kinds of, say, I will imagine the traditional network, we will convert it into a conglomerate of uh, different layers of secure network under the same infrastructure. So that is what our uh, uh, challenges we need to face, and we would uh, we, we require the uh, vendors uh, to make the designs and so so that we can uh, make this uh, to happen quickly. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks. In Huawei's digital transformation, we have combined cloud computing, big data, AI, IoT technologies to support transformation of IT from a supporting department into an enablement department. Huawei IT has built HIS, Huawei IT Service Platform. This is a digitalized service platform. And this is where we provide service orchestration based on business scenarios to enable business operations. We have identified 68 scenarios, including customer-facing scenarios like consumer stores, factories, supply centers, service centers, and exhibitions as well as campus and office scenarios like office, meeting rooms, hotel, laboratories, and so on. We have also identified shared service center scenarios, such as remote delivery center, training center, and so on. This has changed the way IT works in Huawei. All the standard IT equipment and services for all scenarios can be subscribed to on HIS platform. They don't need to apply for it or get the approval for it. We have also provided clear service SLAs and delivery cycle commitments to all scenarios. So the biggest challenge that Huawei IT faces is how to build standard IT equipment and services in all scenarios to efficiently and rapidly support the business. Thank you. Kitty, would you like to add something here in terms of how your IDC kind of add to from a specific verticals point of view, from a digital transformation point of view? Sure, I think um, during my presentation, I did actually mention that in order to unlock the, um, the challenge of digital determinants, it's really to, there is actually five challenges we are looking mm -hmm. at. I, but I really want to highlight uh, at this moment that the silo digital in initiative, because at the end of the day, how good we can provide the product or the um, customer support is really how much data mm -hmm both internally and externally that we, we can integrate together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So a lot of the strategy is not just about one single function or one single objective. Mm -hmm. How we can extend it to actually cover more um, future requirements. This is something very important and we need to plan it out at the beginning mm -hmm. of the digital transformation plan. And um, that's what I see that um, it is one of the major challenges that a lot of companies are, are facing at this moment. Right. So it's very clear the current traditional network is not going to be the right one for doing the digital transformation. Uh, case in point, for example, in 2019, we have a large commercial deployments of Wi-Fi 6. We have started to see that, actually. Wi-Fi 6 is a game changer. You know, it's not, no, no longer about the speeds and feeds. It takes us to the gigabit range. But it's all about the capacity, the problem that we have not tackled for a long time. So I do believe the network has to change. The building blocks, the underlying infrastructure has to be rebuilt for the next era. So Dr. Ho, how are you accomplishing in the University of Hong Kong to create this new network next generation for the digital transformation? Yeah, thank you. Actually, uh, in, the in, in the infrastructure aspect, uh, the traditional uh, network will no longer fit into the purpose that uh, we are going to forward in the digital transformation. 
in a sense that uh, the uh, IT services is no longer just the information processing and providing the information infrastructure for people to interconnect. Instead, they are making of the enabling of the different kinds of uh, business to work into digital mode. So in this aspect, we need a real network with a common platform while it can be versatile that we can configure to fit into different purposes. For instance, we are thinking of, actually we are building off uh, uh, on the, on the uh, uh, traditional network that now we have, I want to have a layer of IoT network. So with uh, designed security, no people would worry about, oh, all these IoT would be hampered by hackers and so. And we would also have a new layer of surveillance network. This should be under law compliance and a lot of people would, would concern that, that their privacy will be breached. So all this kind of network would be, would be, could be realized by the technology, say the VXLAN or the software defined network. On the other hand, we understand for the software defined network, it is a concept very good, but they're very complicated to uh, program and very uh, complicated to uh, configure by people in, in terms of the control plane and the, in the inscription plane. So uh, we look forward to have the vendor, say like Huawei, and so they can design the kind of uh, control plane with specific scenario that can fit into, say, the educational uh, business and uh, this education uh, uh, environment, campus environment. So in this, this very aspect, we, we hope that there's some kind of uh, very uh, AI-driven and very uh, intelligent kind of uh, 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 control platform that would enable our people to just look at the, the uh, control panel, they can configure, monitor, and also tackle and troubleshoot all the problem very quickly so that until then, we cannot uh, uh, make, make, make this uh, digital transfer as a success. So this is the, the basic, thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Mr. Wong, I think uh, you've been handling the Huawei's IT services department. It'll be great to see from your point of view in the large enterprises, what kind of things you're doing to get to this digital native, digital transformation, maybe at Huawei. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, there are five challenges, key challenges that Huawei IT is facing. First, the challenge coming from managing a massive amount of um, devices connected to the network. Now in Huawei IT network, we have 400 thousands of wireless terminals and millions of wired terminals, including um, R&D PCBs, devices, and desktop cloud terminals. And we also have 100,000 plus IoT terminals. In the future, we expect to have millions of IoT terminals connected to our network. We need to manage them effectively. The second challenge is that we need to be able to support business in all scenarios rapidly. We need to think about service orchestration, standardized network deployment, plug and play of the, the hardware, and cloud-based delivery. The third challenge is that the network strategies and policies are becoming more and more complicated. We need to think about how to build the capability of strategy management based on service intent. And the fourth one is how to build network end-to-end -end visibility, how to build in-depth insight into users and applications experience, and also make it into an operational capability that can be revoked by upper layer applications. And the fifth one is reliability and security. Now, core devices in the network, backbone devices, are more and more powerful. More users and terminals are connected to them. If there is a fault, if the service is down, the impact is huge. So in terms of service continuity, reliability is crucially important. And the network should be able to sense threats and have the capability to isolate by port and IP. Great. Kitty, anything to add there on the next generation networks? Do you think uh, from, from your point of view? Yeah, I think um, they have covered most of the important point of view, like just to really like simplify it. I think um, to begin with, with a digital platform mm -hmm. that you put uh, artificial intelligence in as the core, mm -hmm. really collect the 
internal data process, external data process. The network needs to be um, robust enough that you can integrate all the external services or even in the future DevOps that you will actually try to um, encrypt with. So with the network with like low latency that you can provide fast analytics, push the data back to the um, uh, edge. This is the type of digital platform that we should really start to build and architect for the future network. I totally agree. The network has to be fast, stable, and uh, being able to deploy new services. Mike, you talked a lot about the solutions and products. You probably are the best guy to talk about uh, some of the, the next generation networks on the product side. Okay, AJ, and I think uh, what you said are already very comprehensive. Uh, in addition, I need to add two points. Uh, the first is, I think uh, the future-proof campus network should uh, support the uh, so Wi-Fi 6, IoT, and wired network convergence to provide a unified um, access, control, and the management. So, so we, it can help our customer to deploy the service quickly and uh, to reduce the capex for them. And uh, second, I think uh, the future-proof campus network should support the uh, open and uh, um, programmability. Uh, because we, I think we are in the midst of the new technologies and the service changes fast and a lot of service will come in the next few years. So we need to support our customers to upgrade their campus network smoothly to meet the future requirements. Totally, I think uh, there is no question that the next generation network has to be a lot more open, a lot more programmable, a uh, lot more agile, a lot more nimble, a lot more easier to deploy services. I know we are getting to the end of the kind of time limit here. So probably this is gonna be the last question here. You know, one of the questions that we keep getting from our customers is from the CIOs and CTOs is we got so many priorities. Uh, we want to do digital transformation. How do I prioritize those requirements? What should I be looking at, focusing at? I mean, sort of a summary from your point of view from digital transformation, next generation networks, uh, what you see in your networks. Uh, as we can anticipate, uh, the campus network or the next generation campus network would be more sophisticated and uh, programmable and uh, agile, as uh, uh, HR said. But uh, it, won't, it would work only when the system is observable and manageable or controllable. So that is most important. Otherwise, it is just something that we like to have and it, it works for a while and then nobody would try to uh, touch on it. So this uh, manageability or controllability and observability must be built first. Right? It is the confidence to tell people, we are working on the digital transformation, we are running a different kind of services on a platform, that we know how they work and how they control uh, and, uh, and uh, how they can be improved. So what I want is the, 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 the Huawei solution just like this, a uh, campus inside things, right? So I think that is very, really important, right? That is the foundation to enable people to have the confidence to move forward in that direction. Absolutely. Um, I believe that we need to have an in-depth understanding of business scenarios and build the right network services according to the scenario. And second, I think we need to select a network platform that is open, that has powerful service orchestration capability and has the experience inside capability. And the third one, the network planning should be ahead of the current time. And the fourth one is that we should refer to advanced and good and best practices in the industry. Huawei ID intends to keep on innovating based on the ex experience, work with the product line to build and publish network construction standards and practices to all. Okay, um, as I mentioned in my presentation, mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, the future-proof campus network should have three core values. Mm -hmm. The first one is the uh, ultra
six is already here, and IoT is coming, and uh, I think uh, uh, future network should uh, provide an uh, ultra broadband network to provide a high quality service to the to the end users. And the second is intelligent, um, because the network should uh, provide the intel intelligent capability to provide the uh, automatic service provisioning and the intelligent ONM. And when the network attack or network congestion happen, um, these issues must be identified and uh, uh, in minutes. And so the network is safe and automatic. And the third one I think is uh, open and uh, programmability. I think this is very important for the evolution to the future services. Yeah. Oh my, that, those are great important points, Mike. Thank you very much for that. Kitty, would really look forward to you summarizing the whole discussion and what do you think? How should, how should we look at the priorities and the different requirements for the digital transformation of the next generation network? What should our audience do? Sure, I think digital transformation at the end of the day is really about how we can use and optimize data. Mm -hmm. So the network that we are really looking for is number one, seamlessly can connect all the devices, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. provide low latency. Remember, by 2020, 63 million of devices will connect to the network at the same time. So how can we provide this kind of quality? Smart network. That it is uh, easy to use and understand my business requirement in term based network. Mm -hmm. So it is the type of intelligence that we are looking for open architecture, it can really provide the protection for the long-term investment everybody are going to put together. And it, it is actually less, really, uh, depends on the vendor. Mm -hmm. So it can actually give us an open architecture and platform that a user are comfortable to use. Great, I think these are great points. Some of the views that you brought and shared with our audience, they're gonna find it extremely useful. I really would like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you. Thanks for coming and thank you very much. So this is kind of concludes our live webcast here. Uh, as our panelists asked the discussion that happened earlier, digital transformation is not a question of if, it's a question of when. It's not a one-time process, it's a continuous process. And one thing that is very critical in the digital transformation is the connectivity, is the network. You have to have the right pieces. I strongly urge and uh, encourage all our audiences to look at some of the new solutions and the products that Mike talked about and see how it can help you accelerate your digital transformation journey and be digital aware. And that's your wrap, hope to see you next time. Thank you very much.